Brightstorm has thousands of high-quality videos covering all major subjects. Please check out more at www.brightstorm.com. A proportion is two equal ratios. You can also think of it as two equal fractions. And you guys already know a lot about fractions. For example, let's say I were to write 5 sixths is equal to 10 twelfths. You guys know those are equivalent fractions. And in case you forgot, let me just remind you that I multiply 5 by 2 in order to get 10, and I multiply 6 by 2 in order to get 12. That's how I know those are the same quantity, the same fraction. Sometimes with proportions, you see two equal ratios written like this. A lot of times you're going to have a variable where instead of telling you that was 12, they would ask you to find out what it is. That's something you're going to run into a lot. So when you're given a problem like this, there's a couple different ways to solve. The first way is the way I just described to you, where you think about how 5 times 2 gave you the answer 10, so 6 times 2 would have given me that 12. That's one way to think about it, is to look for what number you're multiplying by. Another way to look at it is to do what's called cross-multiplying. And cross-multiplying is where you multiply the diagonal quantities and set the products equal to each other. Let me say that one more time. You multiply the diagonal quantities and set the products equal to each other. So here we go. 5 times x, that's my first product, is going to be equal to 6 times 10. And you can kind of do in your head how this would give you the answer x equals 12. So cross multiplying is another good technique for solving proportions. The last method I want to show you is the one that makes most sense to me mathematically. Let me write that same problem. What I would want to do is try to undo what's happening to x, just like I would with sol or, excuse me, solving an equation. So right now I have 10 divided by x. If I wanted to get x out of the denominator, I would multiply both sides of the equation by x so that those cancel out. And then I'd be working with the problem 5x divided by 6 equals 10. And from there, you would go through and either multiply by 6 fifths, which is the reciprocal of this, or you could multiply in two different steps, multiply by 6 over 1. So you have 5x equals 60. And then finally, divide both sides by 5 to see x equals 12. This way is the longest, but it's the most mathematically precise. A lot of students jump right to cross multiplying because they think it's pretty easy. And you're right, it is probably the easiest method, but you have to make sure that you understand cross multiplying is really doing this process in fewer steps. So when you guys come, with a purports, come across a proportion, which is two equal fractions, think about which method you want to use, whether it's looking for what's the number you're multiplying by to get from one fraction to the next, whether you choose to cross multiply or to do it out using solving techniques like this. And by two. I can't do this with you two laughing back there. <laughs> so if we had, no, that's not right, three coplanar points. So have you ever gotten off an airplane? <laughs> That should be... Less than. Yeah. Dang. Is it like 500 degrees in here or what? All right, so when you're in chemistry class, you're going to be doing a lot of work. You're going to be starting over. So as an example, we could consider like you've got a chain hanging from two, um, two fix. Yeah. 